One of the great things about GraphQL is it makes it super easy to combine different data sources. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can combine MongoDB and PostgreSQL if you ever want to split up your data or if you want to across all kinds of different sources you can and you can combine them into your API. Now, the examples that I'm choosing here are Mongo and Postgres, but it doesn't really matter what you choose. It can be any database, Redis, it can be MySQL, SQLite, doesn't really matter. It can be an external API, it could be Elasticsearch, it doesn't matter where you're getting the data from. It makes it very easy to combine them into a single response. So just keep that in mind, it's not specific. This is just an example of those two DBs. So here's the example. I have uh, MongoDB and Mongoose uh, as my, the way I'm interacting with MongoDB. And then I'm using Next to interact with uh, PostgreSQL. Uh, so these are just uh, libraries that allow me to send SQL and Mongo requests. Uh, and so I'm using Apollo server as well. And I'm connecting right here to Postgres and to the Mongo database. Uh, and here is the data that I'm looking at. So in this case, I have users I'm storing in Mongo and books I'm storing in Postgres. So here's my user. It has a name, which is a string, and then uh, some book IDs or the books that the user has written. And that is being stored in Postgres, but I'm storing the IDs in an array so we can uh, reference them. And so this is my graph data or my GraphQL data. So here's my book. We get the ID, the title, and this is going to be coming from Postgres SQL but the users are stored in Mongo. And then here I have the type user, where the ID and name is stored in Mongo, but the books are sto stored in Postgres. And so what we're gonna take a look at is how we can query these and how we can uh, create users and books. Though creating users and books, this is not really anything magical, but when we get to the querying, that's when we're gonna see where GraphQL makes it special. All right, so let's start with how we actually just create users and create books. So here we're going to just uh, insert a user into Mongo. So we're gonna grab a name from the mutation here, create user, and we're just gonna save the user like that. And then for creating books, I'm getting the title of the book and the author. And here I'm just inserting this into PostgreSQL here. And then I'm returning all the fields. And then I'm updating in Mongo the ID of the book that I just inserted. That way I keep track of in Mongo all the IDs in Postgres so I can reference them later. And then this is where the magic of GraphQL comes in. So here I'm selecting all my books and selecting all my users for the two different queries. Um, and so we'll notice that this will leave us without the author field on the books and without the books field on the user. So those are two special fields which are coming from different data sources. And so with GraphQL, we can resolve these fields individually. And so it doesn't really matter where they're coming from. In this case, we just have a single field that's coming from Mongo and a single field that's coming from Postgres, and we need to, you know, switch it. Uh, but this could be all of our fields are coming from a, a different places, and we need to merge them together. Um, so it doesn't really matter. We can uh, individually resolve the fields from anywhere. So for our book, we're fetching the authors. So we're saying user.find one, and then we're finding one for the uh, book ID. Right, and we're searching Mongo to find the user which contains uh, this book ID. And then for our users, we are searching for uh, all the books that this user has written. And so we're searching next, or PostgreSQL, where we can find a uh, ID for the book, whereas run the books that they have written. So as you can see, I'm basically, uh, for the users, I'm making a Mongo request. Uh, and then when it goes down here, it's going to send a SQL request to Postgres. So it's going to be one Mongo request and one SQL request, and then for its inverse for the books. Um, but there you go. That's basically the format of how you do it, is you can have some stuff in your resolver if you want, but you break it up into individual resolver fields for the types, and you fetch that data from wherever you want. So let's see this in action real quick from GraphQL Playground. So here we can create a user. We can create user Tom, and we can copy this ID now and we can create a book for Tom. So we're gonna create the book Life of Tom. And we can see ID 13, title Life of Tom, and now we can query all the books. So I uh, created a book earlier called The Life of Bob, and we can see the Bob book, and the author is uh, Bob, and then the author of Life of Tom is Tom. So we can see this is a mixed response to the data is coming from Mongo and from Postgres. And then we can do the same thing, we can fetch all our users. 
So we can see Bob has written a single book, Life of Bob, and we see Tom wrote a single book, Life of Tom. Uh, so there you go. That is how you can mix data sources in GraphQL. You just resolve the different fields from different places. And so we could just be instantiating different uh, data sources at the top or wherever you want to, and then you can make requests in your resolvers for that.